On Monday, August 9th, the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, better known as the IPCC, released part of a major report on the current state of the climate crisis. The report was commissioned by the IPCC's 195 member countries. Hundreds of climate scientists were tasked with providing a physical science basis for policymakers to understand the past, present, and future of global warming. In this report, the IPCC confirms that each of the last four decades has been successfully warmer than any decade that preceded it since 1850. Human-caused global warming has already led to a likely range of global surface temperature increase of 0.8 degrees Celsius to 1.3 degrees Celsius, with a best estimate of 1.07 degrees Celsius. The rapid emission of greenhouse gases driven by the burning of fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas have contributed to a warming of between 1 to 2 degrees Celsius. And the impacts are already being felt. The report claims that climate change is already transforming every inhabited region across the globe, driving observed changes in weather and creating widespread climate instability. What we are left with is a cruel cycle of unequal extremes, heavy precipitation in some areas, increased drought in others. Ecological and agricultural destruction abound. Meanwhile, fast-melting Arctic ice is creating sea levels that aren't just rising, but surging at a rapidly accelerating pace. The annual rate of sea level rise increased by 46% from the first 70 years of the 20th century to the period between 1971 and 2006. But in the last 15 years alone, that rate has almost doubled. According to the report, sea levels will continue to rise for centuries to millennia due to continuing deep ocean warming and ice sheet melt and will remain elevated for thousands of years. It's a consequence that poses an existential threat to entire low-lying island nations and major coastal cities alike. Heat waves, the globe's most deadliest weather event, will rapidly increase as well. Extreme heat events that prior to human influence occurred just once in every 50 years are now nearly five times more likely. Under 1.5 degrees Celsius of warming, that will jump to 8.6 times per every 50 years, and under two degrees, almost 14 times per 50 years. Under four degrees of warming, 39 times per 50 years. We face an uncertain future, but a more disruptive one in coming years appears inevitable. Even under the best case scenarios put forth in the IPCC report will include each of the next three decades as the hottest decades in recorded human history. The reason? The delayed consequences of more than a century of burning fossil fuels combined with ongoing emissions. As famed climate scientist Michael Mann said in January, we will have to reckon with the warming that's already been committed to. Look, we have to adapt to those changes that are inevitable, that are already baked in, and we can still keep climate change to a level where we and other living things can adapt. But if we let it go much beyond uh, you know, the warming that we've already seen and the impacts that that has caused, it'll be beyond our adaptive capacity or the adaptive capacity of our biosphere of other living things. And so um, adaptation, yeah, we have to adapt to those changes that are now baked in, but we have to prevent those changes that we still can. Carbon dioxide emissions alone have created three quarters of a degree of warming since the Industrial Revolution. But methane, a more potent greenhouse gas in the short term, but an often overlooked source of global warming, has also accounted for about a half a degree of human-caused temperature increase. The proliferation of fossil fuels is bringing Earth to a boiling point. Global land temperatures are expected to increase until at least mid-century, even under the IPCC's best-case scenario. And in the latest report, the IPCC has outlined a potential future where our natural ocean and land carbon sinks will be less effective at slowing the accumulation of CO2 in the atmosphere. In fact, much of our land and ocean could transform into a net emitter of greenhouse gases. 
turning our own natural world against us. The delayed action on the climate crisis means there is no going back from some of the changes in the climate system. However, as the IPCC notes, there remains a chance to actually reduce global temperature by the end of the century if the world takes steps to quickly end the burning of fossil fuels. Uh, but what the climate models tell us is that the warming you get is pretty much a function, a consequence of the cumulative emissions up to now. So if we stop burning carbon now, global surface temperatures plateau fairly quickly. And this is an important point because it's been long misunderstood. There is this um, continuing sort of misconception that the uh, planet will continue to warm up for decades even if we stop emitting carbon now. And that's based on sort of old fashioned climate experiments, climate modeling experiments, where we treated CO2 as sort of a control knob and you turn it up and the planet warms up and the oceans continue to warm even after you stop turning it up because of what we call thermal inertia. The oceans continue sort of their sluggish warming response to the greenhouse gases already in the atmosphere. So that continues for decades. And we call that committed warming and it's true. But that's combated by the fact that if we stop emitting carbon, then there are natural uh, sinks of carbon like the terrestrial biosphere and the oceans in particular that will continue to draw carbon out of the atmosphere. So when we do more realistic experiments now, where we treat carbon as a, an input, a flux. We put it into the atmosphere, but we let the climate system itself sort out the sort of the, the destiny of that carbon. Then some of it builds up in the atmosphere, but some of it is taken up by the biosphere and the oceans. And if we stop burning carbon now, the oceans and the biosphere continue to take up carbon for decades into the future. They actually draw CO2 levels down. That offsets the so-called committed warming and so you've got that balancing that and the sum of them is a flat line. So global surface temperatures actually stabilize very quickly. That's really important because what it means is that there is agency, that our you know, actions now have direct and immediate consequences. It is not the first time a report like this has made waves. In 2018, the IPCC released its global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius report, which outlined dire consequences of a near future and led to an immediate upsurge in climate protest movements and pressure on public leaders. In 2013, the IPCC released its last assessment on the science of global warming, which served as a crucial document in driving the emission reductions and international climate commitments of the Paris Agreement in 2015. And as the leading global authority on climate science, the stakes couldn't be higher for the work of the IPCC in 2021. Later in the year, leaders from across the globe will meet in Glasgow, Scotland at the UN's annual climate change event, the Conference of the Parties, better known as COP26. The meeting of the world's leading policymakers was set to take place in 2020, but was delayed a full year because of the COVID-19 pandemic. This year's COP event will not only bring critical updates to the Paris Agreement to revise strategies in order to meet emissions targets, but also marks the first major climate change conference, including leaders from all around the world, from the wealthiest nations to the global south, to discuss how to build a more sustainable world economy still reeling from the pandemic. So how will world leaders act to avoid the worst consequences of the climate crisis in this critical year? It is yet to be seen. As for the IPCC, additional parts of its report will be released in the coming months, whatever our future holds. Many of its outcomes will be greatly affected by what is understood, and even more importantly, what is done and what remains of this year alone.